all of the incredible things you have to share from Thank your book. You. Thank but you. But let's talk about, uh, you know, there's been lots of words put on the name Islam today. Uh, Islamo-fascism, Islamo-Nazism, Islamo-whatever. But, you know, it strikes me as odd, as we were talking before the program started, how America crossed the oceans to fight Nazism and, uh, and fascism. We crossed the oceans to fight Japan and uh, imperialism. Uh, we've been engaged in the Cold War. Whether we think it's gone away or not, it's, it's back with Russia for decades. Yet we've got this this enemy of Islam, uh, enemy of everything in the West called Islam, sitting here on our own shores of America. And, and we think it's a Western thing, we think it's a Christian thing, or it's a Jewish thing, but far from that. That's right. And uh, this is what we need to educate the public about, David. People think, I think the biggest problem we have in the United States today is the left have been able to frame the issue as a Bush issue, as a Bush conspiracy. Why would they do that? And this is what we need to educate them, that it is not. The attacks against the United States began with the rise of Ayatollah Khomeini in 1979. It was Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini that, that created the phrase, America the Great Satan. Yes. Israel is merely the little Satan, and we are the bullseye. This is what we need to understand. America was attacked under the Carter administration, who was a Democratic president. America was attacked under Democratic leadership and Republican leadership. Well, under Clinton, we were attacked several times, from they, Africa we were, to Yemen. Exactly. We were attacked under the Carter administration with the Khomeini, with the hostages. We were attacked under the Ronald Reagan administration in 83 when Hezbollah attacked um, the Marines in Lebanon and killed them. We were attacked under the George Bush senior administration. We were attacked under the Clinton administration. It was under the Clinton administration that the Taliban trade 10,000 Al-Qaeda members in Afghanistan. 10,000 Al-Qaeda members. Those people in the 90s were not being trained for entertainment. They were being trained to attack the United States of America. George Bush Sr. wasn't even a blurb on the landscape of the American political system. This was against America. And of course, again, we were attacked under um, George Bush Jr. American presidents have been burned in effigy on Muslim streets throughout the Islamic world, be it a Democratic president or a Republican president. What we need to make people understand is that the terrorism issue, the rise of Islam or Nazism issue, the way I want to call it, is, is a, an American issue. It's a world issue because it is not a Republican issue. It is not a Democratic issue because I don't see any of the people that beheaded Daniel Pearl or Nick Berg stop for one second to ask them, are you a Democrat or are you a Republican? They killed them because they were Americans. Why does the liberal side of American politics want to frame this other than what it really is? Is simply as, as a road to power for themselves? Because of lack of education, all these liberal journalists came out of the liberal schools and our universities that have been brainwashed, like we mentioned in earlier shows, by the uh, Arabic propaganda machine funneled to the tune of millions by the government of Saudi Arabia, sponsoring those type of departments on American college universities. The lack of education on the part of the American public in general, we have to understand, David, that for the last 20, 30 years, Americans in general were more interested in watching a documentary about Madonna and Michael Jackson than watching a documentary about radical Islam, for example. Right. This is the apathy in the American public. What I discuss in my book, Because They Hate, which became a New York Times mm. bestseller, which was a shocker. They called it the publishing phenomena in the publishing world because it provided information that hit the nerve of the American public. Because I discuss under the banner of Islam, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. By the way, these are the words on the Hezbollah flag. These are the words on the Saudi Arabia flag, if you have ever seen that flag. Under that banner, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. There is no God greater than Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. The Muslims murdered Jewish children in Israel. They massacred Christians in Lebanon. They killed Copts in Egypt, Assyrians in Syria. Armenians in Turkey, Hindus in India, and expelled over 900,000 Jews out of Arab land. All that happened before they ever turned their eyes to the West or to America. Mm -hmm. And when they attacked people like us, you know, the, the, the Christian Lebanese, the Assyrian in Syria, the, the Copts in Egypt, we were people who spoke the Arabic language. Arabic is my mother tongue. 
we were not Zionist. Supposedly, Israel was our enemy. So why did they kill the Christian minorities living within their midst? They killed the Christian minorities living within their midst, not because of our foreign policy, not because we were a superpower, but because we were infidel. And this is something that the American public and the West in general need to be educated about so they will know and understand how they can challenge Muslims with their, their own communities. I know, for example, David, there are a lot of interfaith dialogues going on with many communities within the United States, right. especially between mainstream Christian groups, Jewish groups, and Muslims. Right. And what is so striking about these dialogues is these dialogues were initiated not by the imams from the mosques. These dialogues were initiated by the Christian priests and the, and the Jewish rabbis running to the mosques, trying to create a dialogue with the Muslims who could care less. And what these mullahs are doing is they're talking from both sides of their mouth. They're saying something completely deceiving, de deceitful, under the practice of taqiyya and Islam, and we covered taqiyya, of lying program. under Islam, yes. deceiving in order to advance the cause of Islam. Yes. They're saying something in English to these pastors and rabbis, while they're saying something completely different in Arabic to their congregants and their followers. Right. You know, in my book, I discuss the hate teaching happening in the United States. Um, terrorists living amongst us. What is happening is Saudi Arabia has been funneling money. Saudi Arabia is responsible for building mosques. 90% of mosques throughout the world, including the United States, right. are funded by Saudi Arabia. Right. And how many do we have here in America? Thousands. We have right now about 15, exactly, 1,500 1, mosques. 1,500 or 15? Right, 1,500 mosques uh, pro, uh, by the government of Saudi yeah. Arabia and 300 madrasas funded yeah. by the government of Saudi yeah. Arabia. And what they're doing is, and they're teaching Muslim people how to deal with non-Muslims living in Arab and Muslim and in, in Christian lands. Thank God for privately funded organizations like the Freedom House, the Center for Religious Study, which went undercover last year. And I discussed this study in detail in, in my book, Because They Hate. This organization went undercover, and for one year, they collected books and publications from some of the most prominent Islamic mosques in the United States and Islamic institutions. These books and publications were provided by the government of Saudi Arabia to teach Muslims living in America how to deal with non-Muslims living in non-Muslim land. And in all these books and publications, these Arabic books exhort Muslims to, quote, hate them for their religion, meaning us Christians and Jews and Buddhists and secularists and Hindus and everything else, to hate for Allah's sake, always oppose them in every way, maintain a wall of resentment against them. They say that democracy is, quote, responsible for all the horrible wars of the 20th century, and that attractive names like democracy, justice, freedom, and brotherhood are cause of all the, the world's problems. So for our country to be trying to propagate a democratic state in Iran or Iraq or one of these or Afghanistan where p people are freely elected is just a is just a joke. It's a joke and it's a losing battle. We saw what bringing democracy to the Middle East did. Because we brought democracy to the Middle East, they were able to elect the radical within their midst. You have Hezbollah in Lebanon who literally took power because of democratic elections. Right. You have Hamas elected in the Palestinian territories and we saw what Hamas did. Kicked the so-called moderate Fatah out and took over control, working with Al-Qaeda to establish a basically mini Afghanistan state right along Israel. We saw what democracy did with Iraq. We wrote the Iraqi constitution with the help of the Iraqi elected parliament members.